Hey guys, welcome back to Immigrant, your source for genuine information about studying in Canada. In today's video, we will be discussing some pros and cons of living on campus and off campus. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Alright, so what are some of the pros for living on campus? First, it saves you the headache of finding accommodation, especially when you're just moving. I still remember for myself when I moved in six years ago, the amount of struggle that I had to go through in order to find the place. Number two is that it saves you the time and money to travel to the campus. You can literally just roll out of the bed and be there in 10 minutes. Uh, you just have to be super fast, you know, and getting ready. Uh, all right, so number three, uh, you will have easy access to on-campus resources and amenities like library, cafeteria, gym, uh, Wi-Fi, laundry, and some other extracurricular activities, which you definitely will be paying if you're living off, uh, off campus. So the next advantage of living on campus is that you won't need to do a lot of cooking, uh, grocery shopping, or other chores. Uh, residences have cafeterias and cleaning staff, which is not obviously the case when you live off campus because you're doing everything by yourself. So the next advantage is that you get to choose your roommate. Most of the schools allow you to choose who you would uh, share your room which somewhat is possible if you're living off campus. The last advantage of living on campus is that it's fully furnished. So you don't have to buy most of the furniture like the bed, mattress, table, uh, chair, which is not the case when you live off campus. Uh, the chances are you might be, you might have to buy your own furniture, which is again an added task. Now let's talk about the drawback of living on campus. Living on campus is not as cheap as living at a place that you will find off campus. For example, the cost of Seneca residence for academic year September 2022 to April 23, it's about uh, $8,650, $8, which if you calculate comes out to be around $1,230 per month, uh, which again is a little pricey considering that you will be paying for the food, uh, phone bill, uh, etc. Although you will be saving some time for the commute to campus, but you probably still be paying for the travel for your part-time job. Now let's talk about living off campus. This is the most common and popular option among international students. Although it can be a bit of a struggle to find a place, especially when you just come to Canada and you don't really know anyone here, but there are ways to do it and I will share some later on in this video. Let's talk about the pros first. Number one, you get the advantage of the large variety of housing options to find something that fits your lifestyle. You can either go for a basement, an apartment, condo, townhouse, depending on your personal choice and budget. I have personally lived in an apartment so far and I have friends who prefer condo or townhouse. So there are many options and the choice is yours. Number two, you can still be able to find a place close to campus and have access to the same campus services uh, like gym, library, sports, etc. You can find a place close to your part-time work and save some commute time. The next advantage is that some places come fully furnished and with amenities and utilities included. And last but not the least, you save money because it's usually cheaper than living in residence and buying a meal plan. An average room rent in Toronto can cost you Canadian $700 to $900 per month and sharing a room can reduce uh, it like $500 per month. Now let's talk about some of the disadvantages of living off campus. First, as I said earlier, it can be hard to find a place in your initial days. But you can start looking online on websites like Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji, uh, your college or university social media page, etc. But yeah, beware of the scams and be very careful before finalizing the place, especially before physically seeing it. Number two, uh, this is not really a drawback, but you you know you have to do the cooking and other house chores yourself. But you get used to it and get it gets better with time management day by day. The other disadvantage is that usually you have to sign a lease up to six months or even a year, which means you can change or move out before the lease ends. The other drawback of living off campus is that there are possibility of finding a place that is not furnished. So you end up buying your own bed, mattress, table, chair, etc which is an additional uh, you know additional cost uh, time and getting them to your place is another task the other disadvantage is that your landlord sometimes can turn out to be a rude person giving you trouble regarding small things and i personally uh, have heard a lot of stories uh, from my friends the other disadvantage is that utilities and amenities are not always included and you end up paying some additional costs which is uh, not a lot but still you have to pay something i guess that's pretty much that i had on living on on off campus again it all depends on your personal choice and budget of course 
I personally feel living off campus is a better option, but I leave it up to you. Consider subscribing to our channel, hit the like button, comment below and share what you think is a good option or if I missed anything. Uh, we do have our services to help students move to Canada. Contact us to know more. Uh, all the information is in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay strong, and I will see you in the next one.